you're still watching Nigeria at 59, our special broadcast on PLUS TV Africa. Uh, my name is Ekene Ezeji and with me is... Amaka Okoye. And we still have our distinguished guest in the studio. Mm -hmm. We still have Jide Ologun, who is a public affairs analyst. It's good to have you still with us. And Tubosu Akeju, who is a reputation manager. I'm getting used to that now. <laughs> you like the title? <laughs> it works well. And we're just saying off air before we came on that, you know, we're all dressed in, in celebratory manner, as is our, our style, despite all the challenges we're going to speak of in a short while. Well, we like Nigeria. <laughs> and I, one of the things I was reading, actually, was um, a Kerry Deleuze spokesperson was saying that, you know, the one thing we can always celebrate is our resilience as Nigerians, in spite of the circumstances we will always be there standing and pushing forward. But on that note, uh, you wanted to say yeah. something about and, the past. And, and I pray that we should upscale that resilience by creating the enabling environment so that we play a better role at the global level. Mm -hmm. I was going to comment on the electricity. Do you know that the first power plant was installed in Broad Street, I think in 1898 or thereabout? Okay. So we Broad have Street a long... We know. Exactly, the same Lagos. Okay. And as we speak, we supply Bene Republic and the J Republic electricity on a daily basis. Between the end of 2018 and early 2019, the two nations are owing us about 15.5 billion naira now. So I don't know who are these guys who want to repress the economy of Nigeria. Just on Sunday, the Jenkos announced they have released 3,500 megawatts okay. to the national grid. And like you said, who is playing with all this? But interestingly, I was the chairman of a summit, the Electricity Consumers Protection Summit. We had it last week because we still have incidents of pre uh, not, not giving prepaid meters, you know, giving estimated bills. Mm -hmm. Communities will contribute to buy transformer. transformer. You will go and carry it away. I mean, as if we are slaves. And like he said, economic wisdom dictates that when there is demand, you supply to make profit. Mm. So you can imagine that the government fixes that sector of our economy. How much do you think we come? Nigerians are willing to pay. In the telecom sector, we are paying. You don't negotiate it. Your credit is running out. You hear that announcement. You don't beg. It's not your uncle. It's <laughs> nothing on sentimental basis. You see, so, but I discovered, and we must disclose it here, that the unbundling of the whole system was highly corrupt. So you found those who spent money buying liabilities rather than assets. assets. And they are now dealing with business failures. Should I pay for that absence of intelligent feasibility report? Mm -hmm. There is a court order that the, the, the people behind all these discourse should be unveiled. Has the government done that? Should Nigerians pay for it? How is it affecting our industrialization? We need to think of the economy. I'm just, I'm At just, what sorry, cost? I'm, what I'm, is I'm curious as to what you mentioned. You said we're supplying the Republic as we speak. Absolutely. And another country you mentioned? Niger Republic. Niger Republic. How, are Absolutely. Able, how are we able to do that? Supposedly it, it was a G to G arrangement, government to government. No, but what I'm saying they, is that they Niger. we're delivering on our part of the bargain or they wouldn't be owing us, as you said. We're delivering? You we're, know, you know the problem with my country is that we have <laughs> not country. challenged our revenue drive acumen as in the private sector. If I can go and borrow billions, right now we are negotiating with World Bank mm -hmm. to yeah. borrow about 3.5, yeah, 2.5, just 2.5. Yes. You see, China, we are owing China so much. Yes. So if I can go and borrow, why do I develop? Because I'm asking this question. If the lending parties decide not to give Nigeria money again, we have, I was privileged to be in a gathering where Dr. Mark Oju gave a lecture that the raw materials for producing cement in, in Kogi State could not be exhausted in 70 years. Okay. So come. He added that it is cheaper to construct roads with concrete. He added that it is cheaper to maintain roads that are constructed with concrete. You want to talk about bitumen? I think Nigeria has the second largest deposit of bitumen in the whole world. All right. What have we done with all this? And we keep hearing, like in the speech today, critical infrastructure. When, if I venture to travel to Abuja by road now, which I have stopped doing, I need about 14 hours. A journey that should not 
take me more than seven hours, even when I, you know, comply with the speed regulations. Mm -hmm. So these are the issues. We are talking about a papa port, clamp down. We are talking about the import duties policy. Right now, the customs have gone clamping down on auto dealers yes. in Lagos. Mm -hmm. yeah. How did these vehicles come into Nigeria? What are their rules? Right now, we have shot the borders because we want to empower the diversification. What result have we shown? How much have we spent to the diversification? This, these are all the policy issues that he mentioned earlier. And we can learn how to manage a country. But, but I some, have been challenged to... Sorry, Mr. Uh, Mr. Jude, I, I still want to say, some would argue that this policy uh, you speak of and the implementation is not... You can't point the finger at Asoro with regards to why it's not functioning the way it should. These are individuals like you and I. Let me ask a question. Let me ask, let me ask a question, man. Let me ask a question. to cheat the system. Let me ask a question. Yes, please. What is the meaning of precedent? Or let's simplify it. You know, I love literature. What does it mean <laughs> by presiding? The one in so charge. the tables are turned now. You're asking You are the one presiding <laughs> now. So you can just look at me and I keep quiet. So if you allow me to derail your program, who do I blame? I walk away. You see, in the business environment, the leader has a critical role to play as much as those who are working with him. Yep. I have done a critical study of the ministries in Nigeria and their mandate. Do you know the mandate of uh, Ministry of Power that we are talking about electricity? Go and check it, man. Google it. Do you know the mandate of Ministry of Petroleum Resources? You, you almost... You almost fight physically anybody that comes out to say i'm government do you know what we have in section 16 subsection 2d of nigerian country on latin and that's amended if i tell you you'll be angry today but we are celebrating it says that the government shall provide affordable and adequate house affordable and adequate food care for the aged pension mini, li, minimum living wage reasonable minimum living wage here for the disabled, for all citizens. It's there. Okay. But you cannot go to court in respect of chapter 2. The, the, the constitution says our economy should be run in a way that we have sustainable development. Mm -hmm. And we should manage it in a way that we don't concentrate well on the hands of a few. These things are there. Okay, let me, let me, let me take it to Mr. Tubosi. Mm -hmm. The reason I'm trying to bring it home in a way and not continually point the finger to Asu Rock is Let's even take the incidents he mentioned. There's a state, you say, whose natural resources cannot be exhausted. Give us In the name of the state. Yeah. Kogi state. state. Yes. yes. So now, the, the leadership there, we would say, is the governor. Is that, would you agree with that? Yes. Okay, so why are, where do we begin to hold such a person accountable for why Month, you know, we hear that they, they have an indebtedness already as they're going in and they're, they're looking for money, borrowing money, to even pay the wages of their civil servants. So okay. where do we begin to hold so them for me, For me, um, I think that my own approach and suggestion will be, you know, I mentioned before Wednesday break that we need a melting point. Yeah. And I By which you mean a point of agreement. Yes, we, have, we need a point of agreement. And the journey to that point of agreement is to have everybody come together to continue to constructively dialogue. Like you said, uh, like you reiterated what I said there, when there is demand, there will be, some, there, 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 be, there, there will be a motivation mm -hmm. to provide supply to make economic benefit. And even more than so if know. we have a lot of deposits like that in Cookie State, what I've seen that a lot of states have started to do, which I think it should be greatly encouraged, is that they are now setting up an economic um, like a, an economic steering um, um, group community. or community which is made up of people from the private sector, from investment, from you know uh, international community and all of that. Why? Because what they are trying to do is to be able to bring in invest, investment into those places and make you know a lot of economic and social economic benefits from the natural resources or the resources that are available in that space. However, one of the things that we need to quickly nip in the bud is to ensure that the benefit is properly maximized for everybody. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes what tends to happen is that the, that money will come, and a, an example is the disco. The money will come, it will not be properly used, and so and it and the solution will not be sustainable. So you come and sell it at ten percent the value of what that thing is, and you say, oh, what we've done is that we've brought um, well, we've brought development to the place, but at what cost? 
So beyond that conversation, because I see that in the last ten, in the last eight years, what I've seen is that states are starting to develop, you know, those economic know. development groups that go outside the country that are made up of, you know, people in the private sector that know how to make profits and all of that. It's good. But another thing we must be very conscious of is that something that is worth 100 naira is not being sold at 10 naira and then some people are, you know, putting in their pocket the 20 naira and then when the person comes, they're not able to make sense of, 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 of what, what, what they purchase. So I think that the active engagement, what I call active citizenship, mm -hmm. that every one of us on our social media, when we're having conversation, we must seek to properly and objectively understand issues. Mm -hmm. We must, you know, ask the proper question. We must seek to understand our problem. Because I say again, maybe like I said, my, my, my microbiology background always come to play. See, if you have malaria parasite in your body and you are treating typhoid, typhoid you, the malaria will be there. Mm -hmm. You don't properly understand the problem. Therefore, you cannot provide a sustainable solution. Mm -hmm. We must, first of all, properly understand our problem. You know, we have, we've had quite a number of issues in this country. Some of them have been involved with that, also allowed me to properly understand. When you look at the issue of subsidy, it has to be removed. Or if it has to be removed, these are things that has to be put there, or else, you know, you will... You Money will get disappear. <laughs> no, apart from that, people will really suffer. And then you ask yourself, you know, um, you know the Yoruba, there's a Yoruba saying that um, <laughs> cutting off the head is not the solution to headache. Mm. You don't want to, do you understand? You don't want a situation where you've killed you know, the situation has become so bad that you don't even have, before you had money to pay subsidy, the situation is so bad that the, the environment is not even right for you to make money to continue to do anything sustainable. So we have to get those things properly. An example is, you know, when the implementation of TSA gave us an insight into how you need to also properly understand something. When President Buhari, in good faith, did say that, move all the money, all the government money into the treasury single account. Mm. What happened? Some of the banks felt the shock because they were sitting on that money and it was good money to have. So sometimes you need to carefully look at it. Okay, is it going to create a shock? If it's going to create a shock, let's... How do you diffuse it? How do you, uh, do you understand? How do we diffuse it that we don't have a problem? So we have to properly understand our problem. Well, sorry, I, I, Mark, I hope I'm not uh, no. running away with this, but I want to ask. When, okay. when, uh, this is um, to Mr. Jide. He's speaking about active citizenship, yes. where we engage with the issues, we show understanding. But then some people will say we're already at a disadvantage because a majority of Nigerians are termed to be illiterate or not at least at that level where they can engage with issues the way he's proposing. So maybe that is what is working against us, that our, our government understands that we will only respond to certain knee-jerk issues like tribalism, like, and they play us like, I, I, like, I, like You know, under the Universal Declaration of Human Rights right. that was adopted in 1948, you have freedom of expression, liberty, and things. But can we claim that the Human Rights Index of Nigeria is commendable? I mean, right we're talking now. about education now, because... Uh, Edu education is, is not something we have paid critical attention to. If we allowed a group that came up in 2002 that they were fighting education, Boko Haram, and they have graduated to bring in the links of ISIS now to devastate the nation to the point of killing about 37,000, displacing millions, then we don't. We, we are not paying critical attention. Recently, a governor took his son to a public school. We're celebrating it. <laughs> when in America, your son doesn't show up in school, elementary school in two days, the police may come and arrest you. You see, how? What are the infrastructures we have for education? What? What? I mean, right now we are even going to the point of discrediting certificates. As you know, so when when, when you don't pay critical attention, we are heading for trouble. And, then, and that is what we should be looking at. How do we reposition this country? And it's so simple. I have asked this question. A vision was set in 1999, vision 2020, 2020, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to be part of the 20 biggest economies in the world by year 2020. We are one year away from 2020. How far have we done? The richest country in the world on record is a Luxembourg in, in Europe. Mm -hmm. What have they done? What can we learn? We go to Saudi Arabia, we go for medical tourism, which is an extension of the colonialism in the UK. You see, so how, what have we learned there that we can replicate in Nigeria? And I stand here today to say that Nigeria is the greatest country in the world I like in terms of potentials. Mm. But we need creative, innovative, decisive, uniting leadership that will take us to that level. And 
Let's switch to Nigeria. God mm. bless Nigeria. All right. Uh, thank you so very much. I mean, he ended in a, in a very good way, almost wrapping it up. So, uh, Tuboso is saying we need a melting uh, point. Mm -hmm. And you are saying, you're asking the question, what have we done? You know, what should we do? And of course, you're appreciative of our country. Why throw this question? At, uh, Why should the Ministry of Power be proposing about 168 million naira for generators okay. and managing generators? <laughs> Under the 2019 budget. Okay, good question. Hope we'll so. come to that. Uh, <laughs> sorry, we we'll have to uh, round up now and quickly take our news update. Uh, we are grateful to have you, of course. We will quickly now take the news update uh, as it's reaching us on this day as we celebrate Nigeria at 59. Of course, you've been with us here in the studio. And we've had these gentlemen sharing their thoughts there. Tubosun Akeju, who prefers to be called reputation Tishon manager, yes. <laughs> uh, a title that I can then love so very well. I'm getting <laughs> used to it. And uh, uh, Jide Ologo, also, who is a public affairs uh, analyst. I mean, they've, they've thrown up so many issues that yes. um, there's so much to unpack, really, and we're only just getting started. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's good to have them here also, to have this very uh, brilliant conversation today as we mark uh, Nigeria at 59. There are so many issues that they've talked about, even uh, trying to uh, look at the key issues and elements that the president has talked about.